So my video where I add my epistogrammas to this tank has absolutely blown up on the channel. So thank you so much to all of the people who watched that. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed already, well then definitely consider to do so because it helps me out a lot as a YouTuber and hopefully you'll be here for a long time to enjoy the content. But today's video is one that has been very overdue. This tank was made as a community tank for epistogramma breeding and that is something that you don't see too often, at least I haven't experienced it all that much. And I see a lot of people who don't encourage you to breed in a community tank because the likelihood of any fry surviving is quite low. But lo and behold, this tank has succeeded. I am so excited to bring you these news because in this tank, well, at the moment, I think we have around 20 epistogramma Vegeta fry that is now around two months old sadly though less than a month ago i actually lost one of the female epistogrammas in here i still haven't been able to figure what was wrong with her but it looked like some sort of a swim bladder disease because she just laid on her side most of the time and she couldn't really keep upright so she just fell to the bottom and while no other fish in the tank has shown any symptoms of anything then i don't think it's a disease in the tank i just think either she was old and passed away or she caught some sort of a disease but nevertheless we still have one female in here over here maybe if i just move my finger here a bit i don't know if that will cause her to come out but right now she's getting a new batch of eggs in there so i'm going to be using this video to tell you guys how i did this and i really want to encourage you guys to try the same because i don't think you need these very bare tanks where you move the parents back and forth and i don't think it's necessarily very good for their nature I have a person who's pre previously tried to breed the German Blue Rams and a lot of these are just not as good parents as people say they are anymore. And there's one very good reason for this because breeders tend to breed these fish over and over and over in the same pattern and that is by having the parents lay eggs and then as soon as the eggs are laid they are separated from the parents and they never get to be raised by a fish and through genetics this like this ability to take care of fry just slowly disappears so i feel like this is a very good way to let them keep somewhat of their natural instincts i'm not saying that other methods are wrong i'm not an expert like that to sit here and claim that but i just think it's it's a step in towards creating a natural sort of behavior for the fish and i think it's just fun to observe how they take care in a tank like this and i'll tell you what i it, it's just such a fun process to watch and now seeing the fry being a couple of months old and seeing the size that they have gained at this point that's just nothing short of amazing and it's it's just so rewarding i'm hoping that i can get some footage of some of it it is pretty late here, so the lights have been out for quite some hours. I just turned it on to record this video, and yeah, I can't really see any of them right now. Um, but they really tend to hide out over in this area. They figured that it's quite calm there. There are plenty of hiding spots. But yeah, let's start with the thing that the most people talk about, and that is what kind of water parameters do I need to breed a pistogramma? Well, here in Denmark, the water is quite hot. So we have water hardness of around 15 to 20 general hardness and that is very hard for epistogrammas and it's also way too hot some would say but through well the drift of wood in this tank and then trying to do a lot of water changes so whenever we have water vaporizing well then we put a good bunch of it out so we don't get any hotter water in here well then they've actually bred in that water and they've done just fine um i am actually just now switching to a reverse osmosis filter because i want to give them soft water but this is just to sort of give you an idea of the water parameters are not that essential when it comes to the hotness of the water another thing that i'm just trying to keep an eye out for is having little to none nitrate and nitrite so nitrite is always at zero nitrates um fluctuates between zero to ten so it's really really low still there are a lot of plants in here that uptake a lot of it some of them are fast growing to keep those numbers low so that has also helped me a lot and the fish just seem to be thriving and that is like breeding is a good sign that your fish are thriving so as long as you get breeding going they don't have to turn into fry but as long as they just breed and lay those eggs well then that's a pretty good telltale that, telltale that your fish are having a good time in your tank well then next up is the cave system now i was actually surprised to see that the epistogramma can breed in cracks that you didn't know existed uh, when i made this tank i made the actually the tube that they've been using for breeding 
quite a few times now. I made that as a breeding tube and I covered it in Dragonstone so that it wouldn't just be one of these round tubes that would be sticking out, but it would be sort of integrated into the landscape. But actually, the big batch of fry that has been raised and that has survived was raised in a cave inside this cave down here. So there is a tiny, tiny crack and a pistogramma can only just squeeze through. But the eggs were laid there and that is also the batch that was successful. So most of the time it's just about having those small cracks and your epistogramma will squeeze through. The smaller the better because if it's only the size of a full grown epistogramma, well, then you're pretty sure that nothing else can get in or at least the female will be able to completely shut off the hole if anyone is getting close and that way no one gets into the cave. And that is a pretty good thing in order to keep your fish safe in there or at least the fry safe in there. And it helps her protect it better so that she doesn't stress out. And then next to that, it's of course, is always a good idea to keep an eye out for the fish that you keep together with it. In this tank, we are keeping some neon green resboras, which are way too small to really eat any fry they spend most of their time swimming at the top of the tank uh, they're pretty calm right now again i just think it's because the lights have been off for quite some hours i think they're half asleep still um, and that fish is just a nice calm fish and you can see it, it just sticks to the top layer there and it swims back and forth a little bit now once the fry are free swimming and the female takes the fry around the tank well she she likes to hang around spots where she's close to hiding, but she can still take them for a swim. So I've especially experienced that, like this area right here, this area right here, and this area over there next to the Boosa Philandria you see right there. Those have been some pretty popular spots when the females take their fry for swimming. I'm not too big of a fan of them keeping them right here because that's like right at the center of the aquarium. So the other fish can easily distract her. But then at other times she also took the uh, fry over to the Anubias right here and behind the Anubias actually. So they kind of tend to just explore the tank together with the fry, but they're really, really good at protecting the fry. Like I am so amazed at how they just keep track of them. For one second, the fry swims away. Well, she just, I don't know how they communicate, but the fry immediately returns. And as soon as she sees danger, she just swims to a spot and the fry follows her. But at other times she can swim around and the fry doesn't. So she definitely know how to handle her fry in a way that they are always safe, which is just so cool to see. And honestly, besides that, I wish I could sit here and tell you like this massive recipe on how to do it, but it really isn't rocket science. As soon as you get to a point where your fish feels good, you feed them well and you give them an aquarium that gives them natural habitats to actually breed in, well, then you're going to be pretty safe and you should have success with it eventually. Like I try to just read up on the species. It's the same for most epistogrammas, um, especially if you take some of the Viagita or Hongslor or McMastery. Some of those, they all kind of raise their fry the same way. If you take something like the Gassisii, that one is a bit more aggressive. So you might, again, if you don't have a huge tank, then you will be in a situation where you want to consider separating the parent and maybe also separating the fry. But that is also one of the reasons that I chose the Viajita. It's not only a, just an incredibly beautiful fish, and I don't know what the male is doing now, but it looks like she, he just kind of swam into the female. I don't hope he's eating the fry. Um, he might just be guarding it. Let's hope he's just guarding it. <laughs> But nevertheless, um, it's just a fish that's really good at being parents. So let them be parents and you'll be sure to have a fry eventually. This tank is around 60 liters, which has proven to be enough. It's a shallow tank, so you have a big area where they can swim. And it has proven to be more than enough for them to keep a territory, but there's also room for other fish. So the females were really good at, if one fish was at one end, well, then the other fish would be at the other end. So they're really good at just taking cover and being like, I know not to go here when that other fish is there and the other way around so it's it's proven to be a pretty good size for three epistogrammas two females and one male and the male can sort of fertilize eggs at one fish when the other one is raising her, her fry and so on and so forth so it's also pretty much self-sustaining aquarium the only issue right now is that the fry has to move out at some point because the fry is quite messy and it will take some time for the fry to grow if you try to raise them in this tank 
mainly because well it's not free food for them they have to fight to find the food so you can also see some difference in the size that they have gotten it's uh, quite different the growth rate on them and i think it's also because you can slowly start seeing which ones are going to be males and which ones are going to be females now because the males are quite a lot bigger than the female meaning that that thing will also have to grow or those males will also have to grow just a little bit more but you can easily start telling that already now and also just from the general colorization of the fish the females won't be as colorful until they are ready to breed then they get this like really really bright yellow color just as most most epistogrammers do but yeah the success has been so good so far the only thing i haven't bred yet in this tank are the uh, plecos but I honestly haven't gotten too much into that because I've just been really, really hyped that it worked out with the male or the um, the epistogramma, sorry, not the male. So I've generally just put my focus there and tried to nurse for my plants and all that stuff and not have too much algae growing in here because I tend to probably feed, like feed these guys a bit on the heavy side because I want to make sure that at least some of the fry gets some food. Um, I'm trying to just, for the most part, feed them live brine shrimp so that their instinct will tell them to go hunt and that way they'll probably scour for more food than they otherwise would meaning that we'll have just a little less leftover food in the tank but of course 100 percent can't really get eaten so we have had a few algae problems in the tank but not necessarily problems but we have a little bit of algae growth but i don't really mind it honestly this is yes it's an aquascape but algae is also a natural part of the nature and i feel like as long as it's just not taken over then i don't really mind it being there to be honest so once again thank you so much for being a part of this channel i really really appreciate all of the support like I didn't expect us to get to a quarter of a thousand this quickly, but if we can get to a thousand, I'm going to be very, very excited. So thank you so much for watching. Stay safe until next time. Bye bye.